Hey everyone, I'm headed out to UC Davis to do some training with a friend, and I figure you guys could join me. Hey everyone, I wanted to take this opportunity to let you guys know what my training has looked like recently for those of you that are interested. I plan on doing a powerlifting meet in November with the super training crew, so I've been doing a routine that's very similar to what they're doing. It's not exact, but it's similar, so don't quote me on it. Mondays, I'll do repetition bench press. Touch and go, no pause. I really don't focus too much on setup or using any leg drive. I use my upper body to move the weight. Tuesdays, I will squat, and then I'll perform a deadlift variation afterwards. Thursdays, I'll go to super training and bench press with the super training crew. Uh, competition style bench press, using leg drive, using a competition setup, pausing each rep, and this weight is heavier than I use on Mondays. Saturdays, I will deadlift and then I'll perform a squat variation afterwards. So I'm deadlifting, benching, and squatting twice a week. I follow each training session up with some assistance exercises at the end, and I train four days per week. As far as the sets and reps go, other than my repetition bench day, I do something similar to what the super training guys do. For four weeks, they'll do 10 to 12 sets of two, then for another four weeks, they'll do eight to 10 sets of three. Then they'll do a couple weeks of heavy doubles and a couple weeks of heavy singles leading up to the meet. So what's great about this is you can acquire volume through weight, not necessarily through reps in a given set. So what I mean is you could do three sets of 10 at 65% of your one rep max, or you could do 10 sets of three at 85% of your one rep max. Both are 30 reps, but one is at a much higher weight, a higher percentage of your one rep max. So I'm not saying that three sets of 10 is ineffective and useless because it's not. It's actually great and it has its time and place in training, but doing sets of 10 does not have much of a carryover, does not have as much of a carryover into your one rep max for powerlifting as doing heavy triples, doubles, or singles. Another great thing about doing something like 10 sets of three is that you have multiple opportunities to practice getting under the bar, walking the bar out, or unracking the bar, and performing that first rep. 10 sets of three, you have 10 opportunities to practice that first rep. Whereas three sets of 10, you're only practicing your first rep, your setup, your walkout, three times. And in powerlifting, the first rep is the only one that counts because it's the only one you get. So if you're like me and you feel like a lot of times you miss groove the first rep and the second or third rep always feels better, you might want to take all your reps and break it into multiple sets. So again, you can practice your setup and execute your first rep. So anyways, what are you looking at here? This is not Untamed Strength. This is actually at UC Davis Athletes Gym. I'm training with the UC Davis Strength and Conditioning Coach, Craig Mazuski, who is actually the winner of the Untamed Strength Challenge YouTube video that I made a few weeks ago. He's a friend of mine, he invited me over, and he was doing something similar to what I would have been doing on my own, so I decided to do exactly what he was doing. We did nine sets of two uh, with a fairly light weight, but we used bands, which I don't normally do. Uh, so for those of you who don't understand bands or have never used bands, what the bands do is they apply a varying resistance. So at the bottom, there is no band tension. As you stand up and stretch the band further, the weight gets heavier and heavier. The resistance on the band gets more and more. It gets greater and greater. So at the top, there's a lot of band tension. Now on the other side of that, it actually, it also speeds up the eccentric portion or the downward portion because it wants to pull you down very hard. So the weight we're using is not extremely heavy, but the intensity is there. 10 out of 10 intensity. We're trying to be as forceful as possible. So again, I like to do squats and then perform a deadlift variation, which is exactly what Craig was doing. So I, again, I just followed him. So here we are doing some deficit banded deadlifts. We did the same thing as squats, nine sets of two. We would do three sets, add a little bit of weight, three more sets, add some weight and finish out the three sets. We were going very fast, very minimal rest. It probably took us 10 to 12 minutes to perform each of these sets. So maybe 25 minutes, maybe that, to do all these squats and deadlifts. Uh, Craig was using it more as a speed day. We were also pressed for time, so we were going back and forth. And I think it's great to do every once in a while because a lot of times I'll take a long rest in between my sets. I think it's great to sometimes 
challenge yourself, speed up the rest periods, uh, especially when you're doing these low reps like this. Um, and what happens is, as the sets start to build up, you start to get fatigued, tired, and it really taps into your mental game. You don't want to give it everything you got because you're tired, but you have to remain forceful, and that's kind of where the bands come into play, because if you don't produce as much force as possible, those bands are going to send you right back down to the bottom. As far as the weight goes, I have no idea how much weight we're using on the on the squats. I don't know how much that bar weighs. I have no idea how much band tension there was at the top with those big fat bands. I think we had a 45, 25, 10, 5 on the bar. I don't know what it was total. Uh, and as far as deadlifts, again, I don't really know. We had, I think, 285 bar weight and then whatever the band tension was at the top, who knows. I didn't really care. I tried not to get too wrapped around numbers. I just knew that I wanted to get everything RPE 10, 10 out of 10 intensity, be as forceful as possible. And believe it or not, these bands actually did create a new stimulus because I don't normally use them. And I was, my quads were quaking by the end of the day doing this, these deficit pulls and these speed uh, squats. I really think that band tension at the top does something. Uh, and the next day my quads were extremely sore and usually when I'm performing a uh, competition style squat low bar I get very sore in my hamstrings so it was nice to stimulate the quads a bit with that safety squat bar using that band tension Craig is also a strongman competitor we did California Strongest Man last year. I'm looking forward to doing it again with him this year. He's done multiple strongman competitions. And he just recently did his first Olympic weightlifting meet just for the hell of it. I think he prepped for maybe two weeks and decided to do it. So uh, a true strength athlete. So here we are doing some rack pulls. So we deadlifted from every position other than from the floor. Did some deficit pulls, now we do some rack pulls. So what Craig wanted to do was work up to a heavy single. He wanted to get four or five heavy singles, again, working up to one top single. I stayed a little bit more conservative because I'm deadlifting heavy in a couple of days and it was more of my squat emphasis day. So the thing about these rack pulls is the bar starts higher off the ground than if the plates were touching the ground. And what that does is it opens up the angle of your knee a little bit. So you're standing up, you're not able to use as much leg drive as if you were to squat down and pick the weight up from the floor. So it really puts a lot of emphasis on the hamstrings, the lower back. It really teaches you to pull back because again, you're not able to use as much leg drive as if you were pulling from the floor. I found these to be a bit challenging because I haven't done them in so long, so finding the right position was a little tough for me. You'll notice the bar kind of wants to move out and around my knees, probably because I was trying to use a whole bunch of leg drive, which is what I always try to do. So the positioning felt very, very different. But I think that's great. We get way too familiar with doing bench squat, deadlift. So switching it up every once in a while, going with a different variation, maybe higher or lower than normal, using bands, decreasing the rest periods, just challenging yourself, just fighting gravity, really does have a huge carryover into anything you're doing related to strength. This gym had an awesome atmosphere. I really liked the equipment. It was great to be able to train with someone outside of Untamed Strength and really go at their pace. I'm always going my own pace. If anyone trains with me, they're usually going at my pace. Um, so other than when I train at super training, um, it's nice to, to get with someone who really pushes you and you don't have time to say, well, give me longer, I want to rest, or I don't know if I want to go that heavy or this and that. You just follow someone else's lead and it's, I really enjoyed it. Good shit, and he controls it on the way down. <laughs> Look at that. After that, we finished off with some glute ham raises. 
So this is a body weight leg curl. You can do a little bit of back extension and get yourself moving, but I was trying not to do too much swinging in my upper body, just really pulling with my hamstrings. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and always remember, Tread on time!